Oh, hi there. There's an old saying that once you put something on the internet, it's on the internet forever. And this is mostly true. Throughout the years, people have tried their best to scrub pictures and videos from the internet to no avail. And with archive sites working harder than ever to preserve internet history, we are living through the most well-recorded time in human history. But despite our best efforts, things do go missing from the internet from time to time. And I'm here to talk about just that, the pieces of the internet that can no longer be found. This video is made because of fan suggestions, so leave your suggestions for future videos in the comments or find me on Twitter at Lost Media Mike. So here are 10 pieces of lost internet media. YouTuber PewDiePie is no stranger to controversy, but in the early to mid 2010s, his image was clean enough to get his own show on YouTube Red, now called YouTube Premium. The show, Scare PewDiePie, centered around putting PewDiePie through action horror situations based on famous video games. The show's first season featured a number of YouTube stars like Markiplier, MatPat, Aaron Hansen, and the Smosh Brothers. Though the show's first season wasn't well received by critics, it had solid viewership, leading to a second season titled Scare PewDiePie Multiplayer. The new season was shot in November 2016 and scheduled for a March 2017 release, but on February 15, 2017, the series was cancelled due to anti-Semitic content in one of PewDiePie's now infamous videos. Despite the season being completely finished, nothing has been officially released, though PewDiePie has expressed interest in the season being released. While filming the series in LA, PewDiePie kept vlogs of his experiences, giving us some idea of what the season might have looked like, with episodes based on Uncharted, Overcooked, Sunset Riders, and Yandri Simulator. Some of the footage from the second season was repurposed and heavily edited in the J-Laws video PewDiePie vs. Jacksepticeye, The Ultimate Battle. Sadly, these few clips are all we have from Scare PewDiePie Multiplayer. In the early to mid 2000s, MySpace was the biggest social media platform in the world and at its peak was the most visited site on the internet. While it's no longer relevant today, since its inception, MySpace has separated itself from other social media platforms with its emphasis on music. In its heyday, MySpace would be the platform that helped launch the careers of a huge number of artists, some of whom are still relevant today. Despite the site being based in music sharing, nearly all the music and videos uploaded to the site prior to 2015 are gone. The story first broke in 2018 on Reddit, where it was reported that through correspondence with the MySpace technical support, there was an issue with all songs and videos uploaded over three years ago. The issue being that they were gone, lost by MySpace. The official story is that in 2015 the company were moving their servers, and in the process all the data was corrupted, with no way to recover the files. On the MySpace help site, they offer ways to help retrieve old photos and friends, but at the bottom of the page it states, if you're looking for something that's not on this list, that means the content is no longer available and cannot be retrieved. They even have the nerve to recommend making backups of your files. You know, the thing they didn't do? Many doubt the official narrative that MySpace lost the files, suggesting that the cost of hosting the old servers might have been too much and they quietly deleted the old content. Whatever the truth is, the loss of music is almost incomprehensible. To put it into context, there has since been successful efforts to recover old MySpace files through a collective known as the MySpace Dragon Horde. This group has collected 490,000 songs, adding up to one terabyte of found music. But this terabyte of content only accounts for 0.1% of all lost music from the site. If one terabyte equals 0.1%, that would mean the total amount of lost music would be 1,000 terabytes, or one petabyte of lost content. Though many of the songs were likely uploaded elsewhere, this still may be the largest loss of music in world history. The moral of the story is, do not trust someone else to back up your content. On February 12th, 2014, an anonymous Australian programmer launched a stream of Pokemon Red, but unlike your typical Twitch stream, this one was controlled by the viewers through the chat. This social experiment of sorts started off relatively small with only 30 to 50 viewers before going viral over the next few days eventually reaching 36 million total views. The initial stream was so successful, it holds the Guinness World Record for the most participants in a single player online game, has spawned the Twitch Plays Pokemon stream that's still running today along with numerous other crowd play game series and has led to a ton of memes. Against all odds, the chat actually managed to beat Pokemon Red after 16 days of continuous play, but due to the unexpected success and low initial viewership, the first day and a half of the stream was not recorded, 
making about 35 hours of the stream lost. Only three short videos of the lost stream have emerged, and with Twitch deleting archive streams, the video is likely lost forever. But perhaps if we consult the Helix Fossil one more time, we might find our lost stream. The worst intros on the internet was a series by YouTuber MrBeast running from 2015 to 2018. The series focused on MrBeast criticizing bad YouTube intros, typically those made by little kids. The videos were all deleted or switched to private in 2018 for unknown reasons, but the consensus is that the videos were edgier than his new content. Roasting little kids is fun and all, and the videos were hilarious, but it's definitely not the best look. There are at least 70 episodes in the series, with only a handful of them being archived. Besides videos of Mr. Beast dunking on little kids, there's also an alleged lost video of him breaking the fidget spinner world record. On May 13th, 2017, Mr. Beast started a YouTube livestream where he attempted to break the world record for the longest time spinning a fidget spinner. Though he lasted for over 11 hours before falling asleep, he claimed on stream to have previously lasted 24 hours, but the video was too long to upload to YouTube, so he decided to livestream the record instead. Even though I don't understand why he couldn't just post the video in two parts, I do believe him, mainly just because it's a seriously dumb thing to lie about. But until he releases the 24 hour video, we'll just have to take his word for it. The Incel Project was a web documentary centered around the early incel community, incel meaning involuntarily celibate. The entire project is shrouded in mystery, with its creator only known by their email address, incel57 at yahoo.com. Pieces of the documentary were slowly released between 2008 and 2012, and the content of the documentary is different from what you might think. The early incel community was much different than what it is today, with most of the early community focusing on academic research and inclusive communities where people could discuss issues related to social awkwardness, social stigma, and mental illness. The Incel Project reflects this early community with most of the documentary consisting of dry, clinical discussions from sociologists and therapists, along with interviews from self-described incels in a self-help format. The project was cancelled sometime between 2012 and 2014 and was removed from its host site, blip.tv, in 2014, just months before the crimes committed by Elliot Rogers, a reported member of the Incel community. Though there's no official reason for the project's cancellation and removal, it's likely due to this severe shift in the incel community. Before JonTron became the popular YouTuber he is today, he had a series of now lost videos from the late 2000s called The Tales of Super John. Once moving to his now popular channel, JonTron, he privated all but two of his old videos. For a long time, it was assumed that these videos were permanently deleted and lost forever, but the lost videos were confirmed to exist in a 2016 video by the Gamer from Mars where he showed small clips from the Tales of Super John he found on an old forum site, but the videos can't be released due to legal reasons. All we have for these episodes come from the Gamer from Mars and two four-second clips uploaded by Sexy Abraham and Harrison Hopper. It's currently unclear how many episodes are missing. After achieving fame through his solo channel, in 2012 John Tron founded the Let's Play channel Game Grumps along with fellow content creator Aaron Hudson, though John would leave the channel in 2013. The channel has since become successful in its own right with over 5 million subscribers and over 5 billion views. In the channel's first three years, numerous episodes were lost for various reasons. These episodes include Let's Plays of Conker's Bad Fur Day, Demon's Crest, Dino City, Legend of Zelda Link to the Past, Mega Man 7, Mario Party 4, Super Metroid, Sonic 06, Nickelodeon Guts, Castle Crasher, Sonic Adventure 2, and Strider 2, along with a now-found uncensored version of Sonic Adventure DX. Most of the Let's Plays were lost due to recording malfunctions and are impossible to recover. The Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney series is a franchise of visual novel games based around detective work and courtroom drama. For how weird the premise is, the games are surprisingly fun, but if you've ever played one of the games and thought they were missing furries, you're not alone somehow. Gyaiku Shonsai Hanri is a 2003 fan-made Ace Attorney game made by an unknown individual only known as Cheshire that gives you just that, Ace Attorney Furries. No one seems to know where the game was first available to download, but there is some footage of the game. Based on this footage of the Lost game, it features three anthropomorphic versions of Ace Attorney characters. Phoenix Wright as a wolf named Tanbo, Miles Edgeworth as a panther named Renjo, and the Judge as an owl. 
all of the characters appear to be original creations. The story is typical Phoenix Wright. A murder takes place in the opening scene, the killer plants evidence to frame someone else, and Phoenix Wright has to prove their innocence with Edgeworth as the prosecutor. To complicate things even further, in 2017, Lost Media Wiki user French Fry Senpai realized they had downloaded the fan game years ago and gave the community access to it. But the visuals from Senpai's copy are different from the footage we already had, leading us to believe this might be the demo of the game and not the full title. Until we can get into contact with the game's creator, Cheshire, we can't be sure there's any more to Furry Ace Attorney. Five Nights at Freddy's, or FNAF for short, is a point-and-click horror series created by Scott Cawthon in 2014. The game centers around haunted animatronics taking inspiration from the unintentionally terrifying animatronics at Chuck E. Cheese. Since its release, the game has become a runaway success, leading to a massive number of sequels, novels, being played by streamers such as Markiplier, Jacksepticeye, and PewDiePie, and with a movie currently in the works. Before becoming a cultural phenomenon, Cawthon released a series of trailers on June 14, 2014 for the game, one of which has gone missing. Using the Wayback Machine, it was discovered that there were three deleted trailers. Two of them have been identified, but there is currently one FNAF trailer that is yet to resurface, a video simply titled Five Nights. There is currently little to no information on the lost trailer, with only a screenshot showing a skeleton of an animatronic that's authenticity is unconfirmed. Ed's World is a series of webcomics and flash animated videos best remembered today as a staple of the early internet. Prior to developing his fan base, the show's creator, Ed Gould, created a webcomic called The Best of the Worst in 2004, serving as a sort of predecessor to Ed's World. Through the 2016 documentary, The Ed's World Legacy, and fan archives, we've been able to recover the best of the worst numbers 1, 2, and 6. Based on Ed's social media posts, it's likely that the webcomics were lost due to Ed getting a new computer. It's unclear how many of Ed's early comics are missing because tragically, in 2012, Ed Gould passed away after a six-year battle with cancer at the age of 23. Though it's been over eight years since the passing of Ed, I know fans would love to get a glimpse into the early works of the artist that inspired so many. Though these comics are missing, the Ed's World YouTube channel has begun posting new videos after four years of inactivity, and they still have the same charm and humor that Ed brought to the series all those years ago. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you might know that I don't really think of lost media as creepy necessarily. I usually think of it as a mystery or a puzzle to be solved. But the story of Camera Heads is genuinely unnerving. Camera Heads was an early creepypasta posted to 4chan's paranormal wiki called Xenopedia. The wiki was meant to catalog paranormal experiences, and interestingly enough, the Camera Heads story was under the bullshit category, meaning it was reposted to the point of oversaturation. Xenopedia eventually fell apart due to a combination of trolls and lack of interest, and the page was deleted in 2012. It wasn't until 2014 when people started asking around about the old creepypasta that the community realized that Camera Heads was lost, and began to piece together the story from memory. The consensus was that the story was about a man who finds a backpack. Inside the backpack is a videotape, a broken camera, and a handwritten note that says, I killed a camera head. He is then stalked by the camera heads, with the original poster uploading pictures of the camera heads as they stalked him. The community also remembers that the creepypasta had elements of an alternate reality game, with some recalling the OP posted cursed images, videos from the camera heads' perspective, and documents of previous victims of the camera heads. In August 2020, a video was discovered. A video posted to YouTube on August 8th, 2009, titled Camera Head. The video consisted of mostly static and a brief video taken from the point of view of a camera head stalking two boys. And in October that year, an archived link of the recent changes section of Xenopedia was discovered that contained the original camera head story. Showing the creepypasta was posted on August 8th, 2009, the same date as the camera head YouTube video was posted, confirming the two are linked. The found camera head creepypasta goes as follows. What's a camera head? I was walking home through a nearby gully and came across a weird stack of rocks and a torn envelope with some writing on it. It appeared to have been written in charcoal or ash. It said, I killed a camera head. On the next line, it took Trevor. And on the last line, get help if I don't come back. And there was a mini DV nearby. This was all that was on it besides static, though I had to watch it a few times before I found this clip. Who took this video? A camera head sounds really silly if it's a monster with a camera for a head. 
The archived page also claims that after releasing the creepypasta and the video, the original poster disappeared, contradicting the widely remembered additional photos and videos from the OP. For now it's unclear if this was a mistake from the recent changes archive page, or if people are misremembering the creepypasta. Camera heads may be entirely found, but until there's more evidence, we can't be sure if there's anything more to the camera heads creepypasta. A creepypasta that has truly transcended the medium. Thank you so much for watching. There is so much more lost internet media to cover, so let me know what I missed in the comments and I just might make a part two. This is Mike with All Things Lost. See you soon.